Of course, the lessons learned on board the International Space Station and the Space Shuttle program during its 30-year history are helping propel NASA's next program, which is called Constellation. That program will take America back to the moon and beyond. It consists of the Orion Crew Exploration Vehicle and the Ares 1 and Ares 5 rockets. We'll take a moment now to give you more details about Constellation and its goals. This is Mission Control Houston. Constellation is uh, NASA's program to, uh, to return humans uh, to exploring beyond low Earth orbit. We've begun with the end in mind of, of, of exploring Mars and understanding what is it that we need to learn between now and then in order to be able to do that safely and effectively. We have three different uh, what we refer to as design reference missions. The first one is servicing the International Space Station. Insert into orbit, rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station, stay up to 180 days or more at the International Space Station and then return that crew to the, to the surface of the Earth. Design reference mission number two would be to do a seven day mission to the moon. Design reference mission number three is sort of a combination of those first two because we're doing essentially the same functions that are in the space station mission and in the lunar seven day mission but now we're having crews stay on the lunar surface for up to six months at a lunar outpost we have a very rich heritage of human and robotic exploration of the solar system the extent of our reach was the moon in generations past with humans constellation is about reaching beyond that point ultimately The Orion system is basically the capsule and the supporting system that will get the crew into space, into docking with the ISS and eventually onto the moon. So that's where the crew sits, that's where the crew does its job. On Apollo we had a capsule shape and in that mission also we were going to the moon. This is different now because the mission on the moon is different. We're now going uh, global access on the moon, meaning we want to be able to go to the poles where we might find ice and those kind of things which will help us sustain ourselves there longer. To do that requires a different vehicle, right, more propellant than we had on Apollo. We also want to be able, when we're on the moon, to have a sufficient crew to actually do a, a lot more EVAs to get out there and actually do work. So that's why we're sending four people to the surface. So given those two changes, this Orion system is, is much different than Apollo uh, as far as the size and the other capabilities. Now to get Orion in orbit, you need a, a booster. So that's Ares, Ares 1. The Ares-1 is what we call the crew launch vehicle. It's made up of a first stage which is derived from the space shuttle solid rocket booster except it uses an extra fifth segment and with a liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen upper stage powered by a J-2 engine which is a derivative of the old uh, J-2 engine that flew on the Saturn V. The Ares-5 is our heavy lifter. 
this vehicle can lift six times the cargo anything on, on this planet can lift today. It's got the same solid rocket booster surrounding a liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen core stage, which is double the size of the external tank today. And it has an upper stage as well. We call it an Earth departure stage. That does two things. One, it takes the lander into low Earth orbit. And after that docks with the Orion, which is what the Ares-1 takes to orbit, it does one final burn and injects the stack on its way to the moon. The Lunar Lander is part of the Constellation program. It has a mission of taking four people back to the surface of the moon. In this architecture, the crew is actually launched separately from the lander. You launch the uh, crew in the Orion vehicle on Ares-1, and you launch separately the Earth departure stage and the lander on Ares-5. Both of those go into low Earth orbit. The Earth departure stage and the lander rendezvous with the Orion vehicle in low Earth orbit. At that point, the Earth departure stage does a translunar initiation burn, and we go to lunar orbit. You drop the EDS stage along the way, and you end up in lunar orbit with the lander and the Orion vehicle. And at that point, they separate. The lander goes down to the surface of the moon. We leave the descent stage on the surface of the moon when our mission is done, and only the ascent stage returns to orbit. We re-rendezvous with the Orion vehicle, and then we expend the ascent stage. We have three different missions. We have one mission, which is a sortie mission and it takes four people to the surface of the moon for seven days. They actually live out of the lander in that mission. We have a second reference mission, which is an outpost mission, and in that mission, the lander takes the crew to the surface of the moon, but the crew then lives out of the outpost. In that mission, the lander actually sits dormant for approximately six months. The third mission is cargo mission. That is an uncrewed mission. It's an automated lander, and that's what you would use to bring heavy cargo to the surface of the moon. You look at some of the choices we've made in the systems we've chosen, the solid motor from the shuttle, the upper stage engine from Apollo, as starting points for what we are going to build. That gives us a great advantage so what we see going on here in the early part of the program, with the test firings and the different things that we're doing, much of that is to anchor our analytical models and the design tools we use to then go and improve the design in key areas. We have every center of NASA's team engaged in this program at nearly every level. I've been incredibly impressed with the depth of talent this agency has to, to offer. And we're taking that and we're applying it to the really tough problems of constellation, of exploration, of being able to actually push out to the frontier. And if you would like to follow along with NASA's next giant leap, you can always visit the NASA.gov website. The actual address is www.nasa.gov slash constellation. You will be able to follow along with the Constellation program and see the latest progress on it.